Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today let's talk about my almost favorite books of 2021. So I saw this video idea on Haley from Haley in Bookland's channel, who I will link down below. She's fantastic. And when I saw this video, I thought it was brilliant because so often with these end of year videos, we only get to talk about our absolute favorites, top of the top. However, I read a lot of also just really great, fantastic books that weren't necessarily like all time favorites, but are still so fantastic that I would love to talk about and recommend to you all today. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the books that were almost favorites and are still so good that I can't recommend enough, but just didn't make the top of the top list. So I have a couple different genres, mostly fantasy. So I'm going to start off with fantasy and we're going to work our way up to kind of the from the least favorite to the like most favorite, if that makes sense. The first one I have to talk about is Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. This is a YA fantasy that follows this girl who is born to a family of witch doctors. And she is supposed to have these powers manifest in her um, as she gets older. And when they don't start manifesting, she gets worried that she's never going to have these powers. And something happens to one of her best friends where in order to find him, she needs to have these powers that she does not have. And she makes a deal with this dark character to get these powers. And it kind of follows the story from there. That synopsis, the summary of this book really only covers like the first third of it. This book is so much more than that. And I was so pleasantly surprised with how much we got in this book. This was an extremely dark fantasy book. It went places that I was not expecting it to go. It had a lot of familial drama and complicated relationships and really dark magic and just dark things happening in this world. And then you get the ending, which was like, Oh my goodness, a shock. Like this book was filled with so many twists and turns. It went so many different directions and somehow made it all work. It was just so surprising and I loved it. I loved how complex it got. I loved how dark it got. I loved every direction it took. And usually with books like this, when it takes so many different directions, sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes I'm like, what book am I reading? This one though, it just made it work somehow. The end of the book is completely different than the beginning of the book. I loved it. I can't wait for the sequel. That ending had a trope that I absolutely adore and I obviously can't say it because it's a big spoiler, but oh my God, if you know the ending to this book, you know what I'm talking about and wow, I cannot wait for the next book. So this one, if you are looking for a dark, dark YA fantasy that is complex and has really like big family drama and just witchy magic. Oh, this is it. This is it. It's so good. The next one I have to talk about is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. This is a novella, a fantasy novella, and it's kind of historical fantasy where it takes place in our world and it's in the year 1915, 1915, yes. And it, fo it follows these Ku Klux Klan hunters. And in this world, these Ku Klux Klan members are actual monsters. So the main characters that we're following are monster hunters and are KKK hunters. And it's so impactful, like it's so short, but it packs such a punch because of the amazing character work. The characters in this book were so distinct and so well realized and just felt so real. You just were rooting for them so much. And the horror elements in this book, I'm a big fan of like horror elements and fantasy, I've realized. And this had such good horror like elements and imagery. Oh my God, so creepy. I loved it. The villain was so scary. And I just thought that this was so well done. It was a novella, which is the only reason I, it's not like an all-time favorite because I just wanted more. I, I have the hardest time 
rating novellas five stars. It, I just wish there was more. That I wanted more. Um, I wanted more of this world. The world and the the lore was so well done. Oh, so I I highly recommend this one if you're looking for a short but impactful read. This is it. It's so good. And the horror. Oh, if you like creepy imagery in your fantasy books, pick this one up. It's so good. The next one I have is one that I was also pleasantly surprised with, and that is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Eilington. This was described and pitched as kind of, if you love Wheel of Time, you'll love this. It actually says it on the front. Love Wheel of Time? This is about to become your new favorite. I did not like Wheel of Time. I did not like Eye of the World really at all. And so that really scared me from this book. Um, I would not have picked this one up probably if it hadn't been for the Shelf Space Book Club. Uh, this was the Shelf Space pick from April of last year uh, when Jade was my co-host. And I am so glad that I picked this one up. It was so fantastic. I loved the direction this one took and the twist it had in it. And it introduces this trope in the middle of the book that I absolutely love in books. Oh, it was so good. You know, it's for someone who doesn't love Wheel of Time, I found this one written in a style that was much more approachable for me. It wasn't as dense with like the world building descriptions. It had a little bit of a quicker pace. Um, and so for me, it worked so much better than Wheel of Time. I can see why it's compared to Wheel of Time, but I think it's totally unique, stands on its own. I just loved how epic this felt. I love the different tropes it introduced, and I loved the ending. Oh my god, that ending. I remember just feeling so confused while reading it, and then it all kind of comes together at the end, but you're still left with so many questions. This is one that I will probably reread before continuing on with the sequel, and I can see it becoming a favorite upon a reread. On, upon the initial read, there was so much going on, and it's quite confusing and quite hard to kind of orient yourself and put it all together but I can see myself absolutely loving it upon a reread. So this is one that I'm so excited to continue on with the series with. If you do pick this one up and you enjoy it, immediately pick up the sequel. I waited too long to pick up the sequel and now I have to reread this one in order to continue because I tried picking up the sequel and was too lost. It was, it was too much time between books and there's so much going on that if you're gonna read it, go ahead pick up that sequel because it's it's a lot and you definitely this is one you don't want to wait so i made that mistake i'm going to correct it by rereading this but i can't wait to continue on with the series i love this world and the characters in it and the twists oh so so good all right the next one i have is actually more sci-fi and that is mind of my mind by octavia e butler this is the second book in her pattern master series and this series I didn't finish because I read Clay's arc and that one was way too dark for me, very disturbing. However, each book, it's, it's an interesting series because each book in the series is kind of its own contained story. They might have some references to events that have happened in other books, or they might have overlapping themes or a couple of characters that overlap, but for the most part, they are contained stories and you don't necessarily have to read them in order to get the most out of them. It's really interesting. Um, Angela from Literature Science Alliance did a whole video on the series that I think did a really good job of explaining kind of the setup and stuff. So I'm gonna link that down below if you wanna check this out. But this one is my favorite for sure. This one follows a girl named Mary who has these powers and was created by this immortal being called Doro. And her powers might rival her creators. And it's kind of this interesting dynamic between Mary and Doro. And I loved it. It felt very X-Men-like to me, which I loved and I just loved the ending. I thought it was so powerful. I loved the pacing of this one and I just for this this one totally worked for me. It I connected to the character of Mary so much. I just oh, I was like, "Oh, Mary, I was so 
into it. I loved it. So I highly recommend this one. I really enjoyed Wild Seed, the prequel to this book as well. And I think it is worth picking that one up before you pick this one up. They're both really enjoyable, but this one is definitely its own contained story. And the ending kind of leaves off in a place where you feel really satisfied. So highly, highly recommend this one. If you like that X-Men type feel in your books, I think it was so well done. And I loved the relationship and the dynamic between Mary and this immortal being of Doro, her creator. It was fantastic. All right, in the last fantasy book I have to talk about, and the underdog of this video, truly, it is so underrated. It is Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok K. Banker. This book, oh, it is an Indian-inspired fantasy book, and it is so gorgeously written. I truly do not understand the low rating it has on Goodreads. It, I, I was so hesitant to pick this up because of the Goodreads rating and reviews. And when I started reading this, I, I was so into it and was like, wait a minute, this is, this is fantastic. Why, why would it ever have that rating? I loved the writing style of this one. It was like the perfect amount of poetic where I thought it, it, it was just gorgeously written. Like I very much appreciated the writing. However, it also was paced in a way that worked for me. It is a very slow story. It's a very slow buildup. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of plot. However, the characters and their interactions with each other, it follows these two brothers who are both born with some sort of disability and they're supposed to inherit this burning throne. However, because they're both born with this disability, uh, they have to kind of both rule together and it follows their story, but it also follows their wives in, in this story and it follows a, a villain who's trying to overthrow these two brothers and it is just so fantastic. I loved it. I loved it from start to finish. I loved the characters. I loved following their story and seeing all of the dynamics. It's very much like royalty, court politics. It's... And I just love the writing. And sometimes you're like in the point of view of a crow, you're in the point of view of a snake. It's very unique how this is written and told, but I just loved it. It was so unique and so unlike anything else I had ever read. I, I can definitely understand folks who are more plot driven and kind of want that faster paced story that's packed with action. I don't know that this is gonna work, because um, it was slow. It still kept me so intrigued throughout and I just loved the writing. So I can't wait to continue on with the series. I think this is fantastic and I think more people need to be talking about it. But definitely give it a try despite the, you know, Goodreads reviews and ratings. See if it works for you. All right, and then I have two that are not science fiction fantasy. So let's talk about those final two. The first one is a nonfiction called Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. It says choosing a focused life in a noisy world. I loved this because it was talking about kind of the effects of technology and social media on our society and on our health and all of that. And I knew that I needed to cut down on my screen time and that's kind of why I wanted to pick this one up and maybe get some tips and tricks. And this one was fantastic for that. What I loved about this book was it focused a lot on how to make technology and social media work for you. It recognized that it's not all bad. Like, I think that there's an important distinction that like there is a lot of good that can come from technology, from social media. There's a, so much good. And for some people, they need to use social media. It could be their jobs, you know, like it, it, they need it. So it recognizes that it's unrealistic for some people, depending on your lifestyle, to completely cut out social media. It kind of helps you identify the positives of the use of social media in your life and how to reduce the negatives. So you don't have to completely cut it out, but what are the things that are negatively impacting your health or your life from social media and how do we cut 
those things out. So that was what I loved about this book. It did a really good job of showing that. And it also did a really good job of showing the negatives of technology and social media in our lives. So if you're looking for that kind of advice, uh, if you think that that's a problem in your life, um, then highly recommend checking this one out. And finally, the last book I have to talk about, but certainly not least, because this one I think might have been the favorite of the almost favorites, <laughs> and that is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boley. And this one is a YA mystery novel. I never would have expected a YA mystery novel to become one of my almost favorites uh, because that is just not a genre that I typically reach for. I like more adult thrillers and mysteries and that sort of thing, but this one was so rich with culture and world and lore and just it was so gorgeously written the characters felt like real people i just loved this story it talks a lot about this girl named donis who is growing up on the ojibwe reservation and she herself has never felt like she's fully fit in to that community. She's kind of felt like she's been on the outskirts of that community. So it talks a lot about how she identifies with her community and a lot of the themes surround that and it's that's beautifully explored. But it also kind of follows this plot of trying to uncover um, who is selling these drugs on this reservation. And Donna's kind of reluctantly agrees to go undercover and to help the FBI discover who is selling these drugs. I just remember being so enthralled with the story and I loved how that mystery was definitely the main plot of the story, but every subplot that we were introduced to and got to explore felt so meaningful. I just thought it was beautifully done. Um, beautiful themes, beautiful lush culture, throughout this book. It was just ugh, so beautifully written. Can't recommend this one enough, especially if you usually don't reach for YA mysteries and contemporaries and that sort of thing. I, again, I, that's also something that I don't reach for, but this one, I'm so glad I did. I'm so, so glad I picked this one up um, because it just blew me away. All right, so those were all of my almost favorites of 2021. Did you see any that you've read before and what did you think of them? I would love to know. And what was your almost favorite of 2021? Before we sign off, I wanted to really quickly thank you all so much for 20,000 subscribers. I am in shock. When I hit it, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I did not think I would ever reach 20,000 subscribers. Um, so thank you all so much. And to celebrate, I thought we would do another giveaway. So I would love for you all to enter. If you want to enter the giveaway, I will be gifting you a free book um, up to $30 of value of your choice um, from Amazon or Book Depository or whatever is most appropriate. And all you have to do to enter is just leave a little confetti emoji in your comment and I will enter you in the giveaway. And this is just to thank you all so much for your continued support. I truly am so grateful for this community. It has given me such joy in my life and I, I, I just love it. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate you. And thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Oh.